note that we're going live. Um, and then at some point, uh, maybe this week, you and I should talk about potentially setting up a Twitch stream for you as well. Um, cause it seems like something that would be easy to Greeting, do. Hello, humanoids. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think that sounds great. Jason, so let me know. Yeah. Um, Kyle, we were just talking about setting up a, a Twitch stream for Dustin to do some like live streaming of OSS work. Um, oh, oh. is that something you'd be Jason. interested in? Jason, your shirt is not a, uh, a, a lightness scale of under 10. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is a, this is one of my, like, I got it from that conference. Um, uh -huh. and yeah, it's not a color I would have picked myself. That's for sure. Yeah. Got to pull up my... So uh, I don't think Mike is going to join us. I think Michal was going to try. And there he is. OK, great. Um, so get a little tweet up there. Uh, this is we're live streaming this meeting. And so um, hello, world. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. All right. Awesome. So um, I think this is everybody who's going to join. Marissa is um, she started a stew this morning because, you know, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. stew is the uh, is. <laughs> but so she's she not able to. Yeah. I just, <laughs> never stew about things that early in the morning. <laughs> Especially about beef, man. It takes forever. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't don't stew about your beefs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So let me uh, let me get this this agenda up. Um, so what I want to cover today is the um, where did we go? The the kind of the process of how somebody goes from being um, where are you at Zoom? How do I share? Share screen is what I want to do. Start share. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, the the process is to kind of talk about like open source. How are we going to take people from first time contributors through to being core maintainers? Um, and so when we look at this issue, uh, are you going to open? Yes. We we don't really have anything at all written down on this really. Um, Mike took some time to write some stuff. To, oh, actually, this is awesome. I didn't realize that Mike had written this out, so this is very helpful. This will be a good starting point for us. Um, so my goal for today is to uh, how do we how do we help our our first time contributors and and other maintainers um, self direct toward maintainer status, and also like what are we as the as like the core team the the ink team going to do to support and encourage this. And that, and that could be anything from like th things that we're already doing, like the pair programming stuff, uh, new initiatives, or it could honestly just be creating new docs. Um, and then what are the resources that are going to be required for someone to do this self-direction toward core maintainers? Um, and then on top of that, you know, like what, what needs to exist for someone to follow this journey. Uh, so someone who comes into the Gatsby repo today, um, what steps do they need to take? What do they need to learn? What do they need to understand? And of those things that they need, which of those things still need to be created? Um, like which of those things are currently being handled by in-person meetings, face-to-face uh, -face discussions, um, you know, just kind of like tribal or siloed knowledge. How can we, how can we make that something that's accessible to anyone? Um, so I want to, that's kind of what I want to talk about. And does anybody have anything that should be 
kind of a, uh, appended or changed on this agenda before we start? Mm -hmm. not, not right. no. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks good. Cool. So Mike got us started with a comment here. So um, the <laughs> contributor journey would be uh, starting by kind of commenting and creating issues, learning how to create like good issues, which would be how our template works, how, um, what are the things that we're actually looking for that make an issue actionable. Um, moving on from there to triaging issues. Um, after getting good at triaging, so this would be kind of what like Darpana is doing. Um, after triaging issues, you would move on to reviewing PRs. Um, I don't know what this means. Updating docs, PRs, maybe docs on. The, I, I really don't know. Um, oh, like a, a pull request to update the docs. Um, then creating bug fixes. Okay, creating docs. I, I'm not sure. So, so I'm guessing updating is like pushing like a change to someone's PR. Oh, um, like like I you made this change. Here's a small fix. To no, make no, no, it no. I think it's... It's updating docs and down below is creating docs. So it's like updating existing doc pages. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. You okay. typo, you clarify yeah. something, you, you document an edge case, you know, that sort of thing. I understand. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes more sense than what I was trying to come up with. Um, and then uh, other actions outside of the OSS repos. So uh, Mike is proposing that you need project-wide context so you would need to know how the repo is set up, the history, um, who the code owners are, uh, and just kind of our, our general workflows. Um, continued interest, I think, yeah, we kind of have to take that one as a given. Um, sense of ownership and acceptance. Uh, so helping, yeah, helping people feel like they can actually own the process. And then expertise, which you pick up along the way. Um, so fast feedback, and that creates a positive loop. Slow feedback reduces interest. Um, so let's just take notes right in this issue because I feel like that's probably going to be more accessible. Um, what, is anything missing on this? Like, does this seem like a, a good workflow to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, not everyone will follow that exact whatever, but I mean, yeah, it's like a lot of... Okay, so we talk about, so like commenting on and creating issues requires very little. You just, you just need to be willing to show up. Um, I, I think that the things that are, actually maybe I can take this and let's just turn this into a... Um, well, well, just one thing that uh, comes to my mind is just like, this is uh, like for one type of maintainer that all, all of these things are like in, in a list. And some some people might might be more interested in uh, uh, doing bug fixes and features, and others would be more interested in keeping docs up to date and uh, accurate. Okay, so so, um, so we would be looking at like code maintainers, uh, so bug fixes. Uh, I just wanted to to to, to, uh, to, to say it, but I'm not. <laughs> Attached to this, no, to I, I think it's a really good way to, to look at it too, because there, there are like, for example, I do significantly more docs, uh, maintenance or like demo creation than I do code maintenance. Right. Um, whereas I think that the inverse is true for you. Um, and so I think that, you know, it, it's worth thinking about that because, you know, what, what do you need to know that I don't because I'm working in docs and vice versa. So I think, you know, being, um, being clear about like the different paths that people are going to follow is probably a good way to make sure that we're not missing things. Um, so docs maintainers would be like updating docs, blogs, or it's whatever. Um, are there any other kind of maintainers that are going to be kind of like standard or, or uh, have you, I guess, have you seen like different groups of people or I guess there's like ecosystem people because there are folks who. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause as far as like GitHub goes, then there's that, but then there's people, yeah, who are running their own or maintaining plugins in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. 
And that would they, be tricky because like if I want to say, hey, we want to like highlight and give these people special powers. What if somebody's like doing a bunch of themes, you know, starters, right. building plugins, but they're not working within the core repo? Mm-hmm. Um, then it's like if we ever want to highlight, hey, who are the you know who are who are the people contributing a lot to Gatsby? We're not going to account for those. Um, so maybe in the future, when we're like creating inter- even if it's just internal dashboards, but also like external stuff, like if we're giving out swag for people to contribute a lot, maybe we should take into account like, hey, you've published, you know, five plugins to the the repo. Here's a, you know, here here's a fleece. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so we can try to find a way to track external ecosystem. contributions yeah. um like plugins published uh okay so that's that's one um this to me kind of seems uh well, and, and then i guess the other one would be community because we have people who are like um like active on twitter or who um, speak, run workshops, uh, things like that. And so this kind of has the same challenges as um, ecosystem. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say let's put a pin in these two, um, and let's specifically talk about these two because these are in the the core repo. Um, yeah. So awesome. so these are these are things that we need to revisit. Uh, ecosystem and community. So that'll be for a later a later time. Um, so then the the process this would be like this is kind of a a process for both code and docs um, that'll just be kind of a branching toward the end of what sort of things they're actually picking up. Um, so commenting on and creating issues, uh, I think the this this loops back a little bit to our conversation about um, how people are discovering issues in the first place. So to comment on uh, issues, we need discoverability uh, for re- relevant issues. Um, for creating issues, we've got pretty good contributing docs. Um, what else, what else would somebody need at this point? Like the very first steps, what, what are we? So, so I mean, I would say more on the discoverability. I think this is kind of related to the meeting we had last week. Yes. Just making it as easy as possible for someone to go in and like know what, what they can help out with. So, I mean, obviously we have the label like good for first time contributors or whatever. Um, the thing I brought up uh, in that issue was um, maybe like sizing would be helpful. So like general, like small, medium, large or something. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, definitely just the quality of the issues and like how, how easy and like actionable they are at a glance um, would be like a, a, a good thing here. Okay, so um, well, the, yeah, the actionable actually kind of would come in from down here, probably like these types of things. Um, uh, I, I guess by actionable, I mean like someone, regardless of like skill set, would be able to go in and like help out with that thing. Yeah, I mean it's very possible it could go down there. Yeah, I, I well, I'm trying to so I'm trying to think of like kind of the major. So the major the major flows, or I guess the life cycle, if we if we think about it this way, would be like um, you take somebody from like kind of lurking or observing, and then you get um, like comments. They start to participate, but they're not creating. Then you get creation, and then you get ownership. Like, and, and so this is a model from back in the day when I was running an agency, this is kind of how we talked about like community forums is that for every, you know, hundred people who watch, there are maybe like 10 people who would comment on existing threads and one person who would create new threads. 
and of other people who would create new threads every once in a while you could promote someone to be a mod right um, and yeah. so I think we're looking at a, a relatively similar model here in terms of the number of people who will be in our issues versus the number of people who will participate versus the people who will create and so on and so forth um, and so I think if we're looking at like taking someone from from the observing phase let me take lurking out of there because it makes it sound creepy. So from the observing from the observing phase to the comments phase, I think we're looking at like discoverability, and I and I do think you're right. Like we need um, we need. Hey, I uh, just posted something in the chat too, Jason. That's uh, oh yeah, a, a great, a really great uh, illustration of this. Oh, this yeah. I th I feel like I've seen this one. Yeah, this one's a classic. It's 2006. So, I mean, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in uh, the golden age of. Okay, so, so yeah. I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna drop it into the. <clears throat> um, drop it into the issue so that we can all read that. Um, on what the issue is about. So, okay, so to get somebody to, to move from observing to participating, we need to remove that kind of imposter syndrome, right? Um, and so this, this comes back to our whole idea of like, you belong here. Um, and also just making sure that we, we never tell somebody that like something is obvious or that they should know that. Um, so when, whenever we introduce concepts that are Gatsby specific, specific <coughs> concept, concepts, even if we've talked about them a hundred times, um, this may be the first time that somebody is looking at a Gatsby issue. So we should link to relevant docs or, or to relevant places that will help them get the context they need. Even if we're not going to take the time to explain it, you know, we like we can use acronyms. That's fine, but we should link to how to find that stuff. Whether there's a, you know a Gatsby glossary, or whether we just say, hey, let's not use acronyms because it's easier than having to link to a glossary every time we use an acronym. Um, Uh, any, anything in here that feels like not doable or, or like something that would need to exist for a, a first time commenter. Okay. Um, so then we go to creating good issues. Uh, so for this, they need to have like knowledge of how issues get closed and so this would be partly docs and partly just seeing the process in action. Um, and they can only get that by being here, right? Does that seem correct? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, do you need anything else to create a good issue other than Uh, I was just a little bit of topic. I was wondering uh, if I should just record how I handle some issues and pick some issues that have good good descriptions and some I, issues that doesn't have and how it looks like and what's the difference in how fast can this thing be handled? I yeah, I really think that would make a huge difference. Like um, I I think <clears throat> on like there's a part of me that thinks that one of the best things we could do is maybe live stream or, or create videos of some of the core maintainers closing issues just to show like this is the process we're following. And then in the contributing docs, we can say, here's a link to a few videos of, of issues being closed by the core maintainers. Um, and it just, you know, it'll just show like, here's where I went to look. This is the file that I opened. This is what I, this is what I'm thinking about when I'm in here. Um, just kind of talking through the process. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to like, force anybody to do anything they're not comfortable with. But I think that if you are comfortable with that concept, it could be really, really helpful to lower the barrier to entry. Um, in triaging issues, we need to know the labeling system um, and the workflows attached to those, uh, which means we need docs. Um, these sort of exist. Uh, what else, what else do we need here to triage? Um, 
or I guess the ability to provide some context. Uh, and to kind of think through things sequentially. Um, is there anything else that you do that that would need to go in here? Well, we we need to ask those like clarifying questions, but I'm not sure if it, it, it fits here uh, anywhere. I, yeah, I think this. <clears throat> I think yeah, I think that's definitely great. Um, and then once we get down in here, I think we're we're kind of starting to look at like the this is where things start to get more core, right? So like reviewing PRs is uh, great. So you know the some of the things that we look for are uh, ability to give constructive feedback. Um, without like driving anyone away. Um, like we want to catch um, like edge cases or bad patterns easy, like quickly so that we don't get ourselves into trouble there. Um, any anything else? like what else do we? Um, not, not sure what else. Okay. Um, and so these both, like this one sort of seems like not necessarily a doc so much as like a philosophy blog post. <laughs> like it almost just like a, a post being written on how to be nice to people when you're telling them things they don't want to hear. Um, or this could even potentially be like a reading list. Because on the, yeah, yeah, on the triaging issues, uh, especially the whole uh, open source gardening blog post that I reference sometimes is like a classic and really good to reference for that. Because anybody can jump in and do, um, you know, this post. Uh, where the hell did it go? Uh, maybe this one. Yeah, Steve Klavnik. Yeah. Because anybody can jump in and do this and be super useful. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I, and I agree. That's um, th this is. I, I think this is one of the better ones I've read about just how to how to keep a large active community healthy. Um, mm -hmm. So having more people in this, and and having the docs around. Um, yeah, and it's like such a simple pattern mm -hmm. that we can communicate to people it's like, hey, you want to get involved in, you like, you really want to get involved with Gatsby? Okay, just go to the oldest issues and start reading and commenting on them. <laughs> like every one of them. <laughs> or, or, yeah, exactly whatever he says. Actually, I think he said he like read through them first and then he went back and then started. Yeah, he like read, he read through them and then he read through them again. And be, yeah. that way he was able to spot duplicates and stuff. Um, yeah. Which is great. I mean, it's it's. This is definitely like, you got to be willing to put the effort in to read six hundred issues. So I th I do think that it'll take a, a special kind of, it'll it'll take somebody yeah. who's interested in kind of the the maintenance thing. You know, if we're talking about yeah. the uh, like the the pioneers, the settlers, and the city planners, like you know this this is something that is gonna it's gonna work really well for settlers and city planners. Um, yeah. And you know, and yeah. that's okay because the pioneers are probably going to end up in the ecosystem space or the, the community space anyways, because they're going to want to create things, build demos, build plugins. Um, yeah. And that's okay. So, yeah, and if there's only like half of 1% or something of people want to do this, um, well, we got lots of contributors, and yeah. we should be giving that very rare special person very explicit instructions about how they can be special in their own special way. Exactly, uh, and, and it really yeah. is like this is, this is a chance to level up to a job. You know, like we, yeah. we always need people who are, are dedicated in this way. And so it's, it does yeah, create an opportunity. Does, yeah, yeah um, we'd hire them. In a second. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you like doing this? Awesome. 
you're in. <laughs> and so I want to, I kind of want to take this and, and simplify it a little bit. So from, from my standpoint, um, we have like creating PRs and then we have like advanced core contributions, like building new features. This, this would be like, um, Mikhail building the GraphQL schema stitching stuff or like, uh, this, you know, building out, uh, the schema refactor that Mikhail is talking about, like serious core reconfigurations or, or new feature sets being built into Gatsby. Um, um, and so if, if we look at it that way, it just, it simplifies this a little bit. Um, and so this to me like creating PRs could come down from um, this uh, requires actionable issues to make it clear what needs to be done. We do an okay job of this. Um, we have clear calls to participate. Um, and I think that we do a good job of this. Um, I think, I mean, what else, what else are we seeing from like the things that get PRs created from the community? It, it kind of seems to me like having, um, like clearly defined issues seems to be the big one. And then having lots of calls to you know, like here are ways to get involved seems to be another. Um, have you seen anything else work? Successful projects. People like working on successful projects. Mm, yeah. Um, well, I mean, but that's, that's also just like messaging around um, why OSS contributions are a good idea. Yeah, I, I think the main thing for PRs is just that, yeah, people see that PRs are reviewed and merge quickly. Um, mm. So, and, well, it's like, A, that like Gatsby is useful. So people are like, I want to use Gatsby. Then they're like, wow, Gatsby so cool. I want to contribute to it. Then it's like, oh, and PRs don't just languish forever. They're actually merged and pushed and whatever. So, um, yeah, I think the, I mean, I think the main thing is, yeah, just make Gatsby even more <laughs> awesome. And um, yeah, like maybe more docs, maybe whatever. I think the main thing that we can do, like honestly, in the short term future is get our PR count down somehow. <laughs> so, like, somehow, yes. Somehow. <laughs> okay. They keep on coming. Not that simple. <laughs> like, just, just stop for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also wondering uh, for the creating PRs, if uh, participating in events like uh, Hacktober Fest or initiatives like Google Sum Summer of Code uh, is something that belongs there or not really? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think it does. Like the, this is um, this is something that I'm doing locally. I'd love to scale it up somehow. I, I don't really know how. I guess in any city where we're present, we could try to partner up with a local group and uh, and do a, a Hacktoberfest event. We could sponsor it. Um, and then, so there would be, let's see. So we could sponsor local events. And so then that would be like uh, anywhere or like active community members are. This would uh, require almost like a Hacktoberfest issue writing. So we, we would need to kind of sit down and say, okay, if we want to do Hacktoberfest, we need to create a bunch of really, really accessible issues because a lot of Hacktoberfest people are going to be first timers. Um, so are there issues that we can break down into smaller pieces so that they're easy for people to grab? Uh, are there issues that are actionable, but maybe not explained well that we can expand on? Um, and this could actually be a really good, uh, a really good way to uh, go back to our, our previous meeting where we talked about um, how to get more people involved 
and kind of talking about identifying issues that were good for community involvement. This could be part of the way we experiment with it. If we write up a bunch of Hacktoberfest issues, we'll be able to see at the end, like these are the ones that got closed and these are the ones that didn't. And maybe that'll give us some data that we can yeah. use to, to help identify like yeah. how to get more people involved. Yeah, we could say if we if we take an hour and a half one day and like us for uh, Mike, if he's available, and Marissa mm -hmm. just spend yeah an hour and a half writing up issues and then we track what happens to those, you know, because um, like because it's not the most fun thing in the world to write up issues. <laughs> but if we generate evidence, you know, that like, oh, OK, like we actually spend time to write up really clear you know, actionable issues and like, oh, wow, they all get, you know, we all get great PRs over the next month. Then that's really strong evidence that we can like tell ourselves like, hey, it totally works, you know, every few weeks to spend like an hour writing up issues. Because um, like, otherwise, it could just feel like not, it's not, it, it's like, it's not, some people are just maybe natural issue writers or something. Uh, and if we find one of those, they should be the open source PM or something. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, in the meantime, though, like we, I think, I think it just like motivate ourselves would be good to just do an experiment to see what happens. Yeah, I, I think that's. <clears throat> excuse me. I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah. So that that's good. So we we can kind of this will be an actual action item. We we can create a Hacktoberfest push, um, and so that'll be that'll be good. Um, getting the PR count down, I. I mean, I, I have no idea how to help you do that. If, if there's anything that I can do to help you with that, please let me know. Um, are there are there other things that we as the OSS team can do to kind of drive some of these other things? Um, so clear yeah. calls to participate. We would uh, want to... So, oh, Go ahead, I Dustin. I, I, well, I just have one idea, and we kind of mentioned it earlier, but I think any video content or just in general, like from looking at an issue to like merging a PR, anything we can do um, as far as like documentation, video, et cetera, I think is really helpful. So like I was thinking things like, oh, um, I, I think a lot of times people get confused or intimidated by like the monorepo approach. So just showing how to run the tests, showing how to like make your changes and just, you know, this yeah. package and stuff. I think that anything like that is really helpful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so sense. I mean, I don't, I don't really care whether it's documentation, video, et cetera. Just something that people can go to and like, you know, teach themselves how to level up, sort of. Yeah, I think this is great. Um, I yeah, I think that's that's a really good idea. Um, <sighs> and so, if anyone wants to, uh, I think what I'll do is. I'll set up a meeting um, to uh, basically like show how to set up Twitch and live streaming. And I'll invite everyone and everyone is optional. So if you want to come, great. I'll record the video so that um, it can be kind of part of the, the company handbook. Um, and then anyone who does that we will just kind of set up all of our streams to auto host. So like if you are live streaming, it'll, it'll live stream through the Gatsby channel. It'll live stream through my channel. Um, and that way it'll, we'll just kind of try to have a, a lot of content. Like this is what Gatsby does. Um, and you know, if, if we get a fair number of us participating, then we could kind of get to the point where we've got like an always on, like somebody at Gatsby is live streaming thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that would be, that would be cool if we can do it. Um, what so else? I just thought another something too, that we're, uh, that we did in the past really this year and it was really successful and I've been meaning to do it again, but have it, which is just the maintainer summit. Um, cause we have, it's told we, we still have, uh, we still have all the random, uh, open source money. That people are contributing. Anyways, just yeah, just saying, hey, we're gonna have a one day maintainer summit, fly in people uh, from the US and you know, and then hold another one in like London or Spain next year. Um, 
because like just yeah just like the faith there's a ton of people here in the bay area or close by or, or you know easy flight away mm-hmm. and just getting everyone in the same room it just builds a lot of like face-to-face you know kind of like hey we're all in this together um we can answer a lot of questions that they might not have that they might have mm-hmm. uh, so uh it's like definitely people who showed up to the last one have turned you know they've been long-term contributors in different ways um and, and yeah, so I mean, we, we need to do we need to do one of these this year, uh, just here in Berkeley again, and then maybe start thinking about how to make this like. Do you term. do you want to try to schedule it around the GraphQL Summit? Because Andrew and I are both going to be in town for that already. Um, oh sure, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Let's. What, when is that actually? Uh, November seventh and eighth, I believe. Okay, that should work. So like, yeah, like the sixth or something or whatever. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good because, uh, and I, I imagine that several people will be in town that otherwise wouldn't be. And then we can, yeah, uh, yeah. we can just see about bringing people in otherwise. Uh, yeah. cool. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. What about, um, what else can we do? Uh, so something that I experimented with that I, that I had decent success with, and I'm going to start doing it on a semi-regular cadence is just working from a coffee shop for a few hours and making it known that I'll be there. So anybody who's local can just drop by and ask questions and, and kind of work on projects together. Um, I think that that'll, that'll range anywhere from like, Hey, let's hang out and have a coffee and talk to, I have a, a like thing that I'm trying to build. Can you help me get unstuck? And, um, yeah, yeah, I can definitely do that too here. Um, um, yeah, we're also kind of related to is like other events because we're already talking about you know having at least like doing a rate like a monthly Gatsby meetup here in mm-hmm. San Francisco and then also starting the Gatsby days and so as part of meetups and you know because like one of the things we want to do with like meetups is like okay we're going to sponsor people anywhere around the world doing this and part of it can be just like have like a standard talks that we you know people can give um that we give you know provide the slides and so forth mm-hmm. and one of those talks would be how to contribute to Gatsby and so we do like a fantastic, uh, you know, little talk about like, hey, everyone's welcome. There's so many ways to contribute. You know, this is like how you can jump in. Um, here's resources, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's like a really great way to recruit people. Um, uh, yeah. And, then, and then also like on Gatsby days, that could just be like a standard talk. Like every Gatsby day has, it's just like we build this in. Yeah, I think that, yes, these are, these are cool. These would be great. Um, yeah, I think that would be good. And then, uh, what else? Is there anything else that we can do? Um, well, I guess, is there anything that, that would be really helpful that is low effort? Um, so like to me, the, the video content, the live streaming is like, you can probably get it set up in about an hour. And after that, you just have to tweet whenever you're going to work on something. Um, the, is there anything else that's like easy to do? Um, whenever we see issues that would be good, uh, just throw a tweet out saying that you that we've got an issue that would be great for a first time contributor or something. Every time that I've done that, we've seen a great pickup on it, and I, I think that a lot of the time, the problem is is more that uh, that people don't know where to start. Um, and I just realized we're we're ten minutes over on this meeting, and I think we have to yeah. get. Okay, we have the. Retro. Retrospective. People are typing without us. Ah, crap. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's call this then. Um, but if everybody could maybe just take a look at these, and, and if you have additional ideas, please just throw in more comments. Um, and we will, uh, yeah, we'll take a few of these out. I'll I'll convert these into actual to dos mm-hmm. here, and uh, and follow up with issues. Cool. Yeah, I think I think the main thing. I think there's a lot of easy next steps that will teach us things and uh yeah so uh, yeah just let's just pick stuff and start doing them okay sounds good Pretty comprehensive. all right cool thanks y'all we'll uh i'll see you in a few minutes then okay all right thanks everyone i'll see you